Good evening and welcome to Sunday Evening Chapel on Sunday, May 10th. Glad to be with you as usual. Hope you've had a great weekend and that the new week is off to another excellent start. I'm coming to you tonight from the right side of the chapel, opposite where I was last week. And there are two plaques I want to say a little bit about uh, here. The first one uh, reads, in memory of George Frederick Vaught, school minister, 1971 to 1986. And then this longer plaque above the Vaught plaque reads, with gratitude to the alumni and friends of the school who built this transept to the glory of God in 1983. Uh, I am not a Reverend Vaught expert, but you could probably check with Miss Perkins or Mrs. Packard, who were both students here in the early 80s and experienced chapel uh, with Reverend Vaught. Uh, what I do know about him is that he was an incredibly colorful personality and that he presided over this space during a point in time in the school's history where chapel time was perhaps questioned uh, more than it had been in the school's past. And he was adept and successful and creative and innovative at finding ways to make time spent in here relevant and meaningful and to connect with students and colleagues uh, as he went. So a lot of the footing we enjoy in chapel and in having it be a core part of our life together uh, is due in some considerable part to the work Reverend Vaught did to keep it going uh, during a point in time in school life where it was perhaps questioned uh, more than it is ordinarily. Uh, I also will say that there's a prize given at graduation every year, the George Frederick Vaught Prize, that goes to a young teacher uh, who has excelled uh, during their beginning at Brooks, and uh, we remember him in that way too. So his name is prominent uh, in Brooks School lore. Uh, the longer plaque above is similar to the plaque I said a little bit about last week, and the transepts, the sides of the chapel, were added at points in time to accommodate this space's growth uh, as the school continued to get bigger and stronger through the years. And so I am always grateful uh, both to Reverend Vaught for the difference he made in keeping the school and chapel moving while he was here. Uh, and then also to those who've given and supported this space and its growth to make sure uh, that it continues to be central and core to the experience we have together as a school. So I, again, uh, wish you all a terrific week in front of you. I hope you have a good night tonight if you're watching this on Sunday evening. Uh, look forward to being in touch some more as we keep moving into May and closing in on the end of this academic year. Not that far off. So keep doing the great work you're doing. We'll keep in touch. Be well, be safe, and I'll see you soon. Our opening hymn is The Day Thou Gavest.
Our first reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child and put the child in front of them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest. Whoever welcomes one such child welcomes me. The second reading is from Mary Oliver, the American poet who died last year. You are young, so you know everything. You leap into the boat and begin rowing. But listen to me. Without fanfare, without embarrassment, without any doubt, I talk directly to your soul. Listen to me. Lift the oars from the water. Let your arms rest in your heart and heart's little intelligence and listen to me. There is life without love. It is not worth a bent penny or a scuffed shoe. It is not worth the body of a dead dog nine days unburied. When you hear, a mile away and still out of sight, the turn of the water and as it begins to swirl and whirl, fretting around the sharp rocks, when you hear that unmistakable pounding, when you feel the mist of your mouth and sense ahead, the embattlement, the long falls, plunging and steaming, then row, row for your life toward it. The final reading is a quote from Joyce Rochelle, a contemporary Philippine-American poet and writer. What advantage has the person who will not listen over the one who cannot hear? Hi, everyone. I hope you're all safe and healthy and finding ways to make the best of life in these changing conditions we're all dealing with. One of the things that I've done to uh, keep myself going is I planted some peas in my garden two weeks ago. That's something I do every spring, uh, but this time it felt kind of strange. Everything else about life has been different this spring, and it really seemed odd to be doing something in the same old usual way. <laughs> I even wondered if the peas would, be, would even come up. And then once I planted them, as usual, I was impatient. Every morning I took my coffee outside to look and see if the peas were up yet, and finally this weekend, the little green shoots started to appear. So in spite of my doubts and my impatience, <laughs> the peas and nature are right on schedule. There's something reassuring about that. In spite of the disruption and the frustration of this spring, in spite of all the sickness and the difficult times that so many people are dealing with, nature just keeps on going. The leaves come out, the flowers come up, the peas sprout. That doesn't change the hardship and, in some cases, the tragedy that this virus has brought to so many people. But it does reassure me that the world will go on, that the cycle of nature will continue, and that we will endure. We humans will continue to live, to love, to be loved, and to care for one another. And here's the thing I think about most. When all this is behind us, I want to be able to look back and say, I did my part to help others get through this. I know you're thinking about that too. I know you're doing what you can to help with food banks, making masks, caring for people who need help, sometimes just reaching out with a kind word and an encouraging smile, doing whatever you can to help those around you. In the end, that is what will matter more than anything. So keep the faith. God bless you and stay well. Amen. <laughs>